It's 2017 and Old Time Radio DVD is still here. Check out our new customer ownership program and the lowest prices ever. Just go to oldtimeradiodvd.com for full information about this wonderful program. Don't forget our new program, 123 Ready TV. Folks, this is really a great app for Android and Windows phones, computers, and tablets. And it's only $19.99. In the near future, we will be adding a new component to it, Old Time Radio. It's a great product for 2017. Visit oldtimeradiodvd.com today. Place your order. You'll be glad you did. The Prudential Family Hour of Stars. Each week, the Prudential Insurance Company of America brings you one of its family of six great Hollywood stars. Betty Davis, Ray Milland, Gregory Peck, Ginger Rogers, Barbara Stanwyck, and Robert Taylor in a series of radio plays by Hollywood's finest writers with the music of Carmen Dragon. Today, a story called Impact. Our star, Mr. Gregory Peck. The scene of this story is not important, because you might find a Colonel Mendoza almost anywhere in the world. He might call himself Adolf or Benito, or if he preferred quiet profit to public glory, Mr. Smith. But you know the type. It's a type which doesn't think of people as human beings. It thinks of them in terms of childbearing, bayonet practice, and loud cheers in the plaza. This is a mistake. And one after the other, they all make it. Dictators don't learn. They just find things out. Not always the hard way, but often enough to keep up the faith of people who believe in people. So meet Colonel Mendoza. Behind his half-acre desk in his two-acre office. In his bullet-chipped, lizard-infested, pink plaster palace. The time? Maybe tomorrow. Maybe next month. Who knows? Yes. Father Michael to see you, Colonel. He said you sent for him. I did send him in. Yes, sir. Now we shall see. Enter. Status, Colonel. Buenos studies, Padre. You sent for me? Yes. Why? Don't you know? Not definitely. But you have a feeling. Will this be a brief interview, Colonel, or may I sit down? Sit down. I want you to stay until... <laughs> Stupid, isn't it? Is it? Father Michael, do I understand that you are a party to this nonsense, that you're in sympathy with it? Uh, this uh, chair is uncomfortably low for a long-legged priest. But I don't mind looking up to people, some of them... This are... is not a matter for Jess. I agree with you. To answer your question of a moment ago, I... I'm neither a party to it, nor am I in complete sympathy with it. I desire no man's death. Even mine? Particularly yours. Spiritually, Colonel, you're in no condition to die. You have never feared me, have you, Padre? Why? Your own courage or faith in the power of the church to protect you? There are very few authenticated instances of a crucifix stopping a bullet, Colonel. You might murder me, and in certain circumstances, I think you would. But fear of such a thing wouldn't help to avert it, so... No, I'm not afraid of you. Your frankness is refreshing, and a little dangerous. Did you call me here to discuss my feelings towards you, Colonel? No, I want to know what you know about this ridiculous plot, this conspiracy against me. If you think it's so ridiculous, why have you surrounded the building with soldiers? 
Sharpshooters on the roof. Why have the police cleared the streets for half a mile in every direction? You appear to be taking this uh, ridiculous thing rather seriously. I've only lived this long, Padre, because I've never made the mistake of underestimating an enemy. I want you to answer a question. Who originated this fantastic idea? Who started it? Who is behind it? I don't know who started it, Colonel. But so far as I've been able to learn, almost everybody is behind it. You are not a popular man. Popularity. I do not need popularity. I have power. Have you? Against this? You believe that I am going to die at 1.42 this afternoon? What I believe has nothing to do with it, Colonel. But just as you have never underestimated an enemy, neither do I underestimate the power of prayer. Prayer? You have the audacity to... You would dignify the wish for my death in terms of prayer? In this case, yes, I think so. Why? Colonel, when 300,000 people almost spontaneously agree to wish a man dead at 1.42 o'clock on a certain day, it is not a matter of a plot or a conspiracy. It's a demonstration. In your case, it's a demonstration of hatred. Hatred, the hatred of half a million ingrates. Who gave them efficient railroads, good schools, a sense of pride in the nation and in their blood? And who bled them with taxes to build the railroads they can't afford to ride on? What can our children learn in your schools except the gospel according to Mendoza? Be careful, Father. I will not tolerate... A sense of pride in their nation and their blood. The blood they've spilled in your senseless campaigns against unprepared neighbors on trumped-up charges. Quiet! Sit down. Colonel, you'll either listen to what I have to say in a matter which... You yourself introduced. Will you let me go back to my work? Sit down, Padre. Please. I, I, I must talk about this to somebody, and there Nobody is... Nobody else you can trust. Neither flatter you nor knife you. Very well, Colonel. Troubled souls are my business. Thank you. Mother Michael... Please tell me all you know of this affair. I probably know very little more than you, Colonel. It seems to have started some weeks ago after the affair at Del Rio. Del Rio? A backcountry revolt quickly uh, subdued. In Del Rio, they didn't consider it a revolt, Colonel. They considered it a, a protest against the methods of your soldiers. Confiscation of food, clothing, and horses is one thing. The abduction of girls and women is another. Absurd, the drunken antics of a few soldiers who have since been reprimanded. Reprimanded? Does a reprimand restore the lives of 142 people who were assembled and machine gunned for resisting the stealing of their wives and daughters? They should have complained directly to me. They were taking the law into the... Wait. You said my men shot 142. Yes. And theoretically, I am to die at 142 today. It is significant, I presume. According to what I have heard, Colonel, it is not just Del Rio. It is Del Rio, plus Santa Montana, plus the Rincon, plus the late editor of the Liberator, plus a number of other things. Del Rio is merely a culmination, a symbol. Go on. As I know it, the story of Del Rio spread swiftly. Where the idea of a mass wish for your death originated, I don't know. I doubt if anyone knows. But given the Del Rio 142... And a fierce resentment which has smoldered in this land for many years. It was a matter of spontaneous combustion. All right, I understand the 142. But why did they select today? It's your seventh anniversary in office, Colonel. Seven has a magic significance to people everywhere. So, at 142, 300,000 people join mines and concentrate on my death. <laughs> Fantastic. It's at least a novel method of extermination. I prefer the term assassination. Extermination seems to connote vermin. Did you choose the word advisedly? Uh, it just sprang to mind, Colonel. Under the circumstances, Father, I think I am permitting you a great deal of liberty in this conversation. You can afford it. Why? If you were to die, it's a generous gesture. If you live, I'll be here to be punished. Yeah. Yes. Very true. If I live, if I am to die, Father, in all honesty, what do you think of my chances for survival? Colonel, in all honesty, I, I don't know. 
The impact of 300,000 mud tensely on a single objective. I respect the possibilities. Well, I think it is a trick, a ruse. You may respect killing by concentration, but I have more respect for lead and steel and... and poison. This water jug, for instance. Fresh every morning. And I haven't touched it. Needless caution, I think. But I'm very thirsty. Ah. Are you thirsty, Father? Not particularly. Oh, you must be. This has been a long task. Here. Have some water. Hm. Afraid. Give me the cup. Thank you. Now, what were we talking about? Or rather, what phase of it? How, how did it taste? A bit brackish, but I think it's safe. Perhaps you'd better wait a few minutes, however. Yes. Yes. I'll wait. Impact, starring Mr. Gregory Peck. You know, Padre, there are times when I wish you were on my side. And we've often wished that you were on our side, Colonel. By the way, may I ask how the news of this, uh, idea reached you? It may puzzle you to hear there are people who are loyal to me, Father. And they should be. They are well paid for it. Three days ago, one of my police... Yes? Garcia, Colonel. Send him in. Aren't you uh, taking chances seeing visitors? No, this is Garcia, my best informer. I trust him implicitly. Besides, I will have him covered every minute with a gun under my desk and he knows it. If you... Report. Nothing new, Colonel. Just more of the same. Places of business are closed. Streets are deserted. There was a small group of men in the Flores Cantina who resisted arrest. Three of them are dead. And the rest? Held for question. Good. I'll help with that myself the first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Anything else? No, Colonel. Except the fiesta at Del Rio tomorrow. There will be no fiesta at Del Rio tomorrow or any other time for any reason. See to that, Garcia. Y yes, Colonel. Is that all, sir? That is all. No. Tell Gonzalez I'll see no one else until 1.45. Yes, sir. This clock says 1.29, Padre. Is that correct? My watch is quite accurate, Colonel. It says 1.30 exactly. Then I have... Twelve minutes to live. <laughs> Ten minutes, Colonel. Ten minutes, ten minutes. This is insane. Two grown men sitting here watching a clock and believing that one of them can be wished to death. Then you do believe it. Let us say that I concede the very remote possibility. It's a handsome concession. Let's also say the possibility is so remote that I'm already considering my answer to those responsible for this, this act of... What is it, Padre? Treason. 
Uh, it depends on the viewpoint, Carl. And your viewpoint is? My viewpoint is that better men than you have tried reprisals against thinking. Look, Colonel Mendoza. Uh. For six of the seven years, you've maintained yourself in office. You've been utterly ruthless in eliminating opposition. You've resorted to kidnapping, assassination, torture, suppression of every form of personal freedom. The condition of the country demanded strong measures. You're not talking from a balcony now, Colonel. Your people are, are gentle, industrious, and shall we say, thinking. They needed wisdom. You gave them force. They needed faith. You gave them disillusion. They wanted a leader to love and respect, and you gave them one to fear and hate. And in seven and a half minutes, that hate will be a living, driving thing. Hate. In 24 hours, somebody will feel mine. I find this a most interesting but dangerous experiment. If it works, it will be tried again. In the hands of some unscrupulous manipulator of public psychology... You mean like Mendoza? No, Colonel, I do not. You are sufficiently unscrupulous, but not a good psychologist. You have only one inflexible approach to problems, and it's muscular, not mental. You were saying that in the wrong hands, this mass mental projection of power might be turned to evil purposes. Aren't you making a theory out of a fact? It was fairly successful in Germany. No, Colonel, this is a different thing. This isn't capitalizing on a carefully stimulated hysteria. This isn't a long-range plan. This isn't an action to be spread out over a period of time. This is a matter of one devastating moment. For probably the first time in history, a tremendous group of people is coordinating itself to achieve a certain objective at a predetermined instant. The voltage of a single aimless thought has been registered medically, Colonel. How will a mind, sensitive enough to register one of its own involuntary thoughts, react to the impact of 300,000 fused together like an invisible projectile? Ah, uh, that clock, it annoyed me. It was too loud. Uh, it was also running too fast, possibly. But my wristwatch is accurate. I can keep you informed. You have about six minutes. Will you please stop telling me how long I have to... Are you trying to break me down? Do you want me to die? No. Your living or dying is a minor consideration, Colonel. Not to me. I know. But I've come to realize the larger aspects of this thing. It was thought that there was no defense against the atomic bomb. If there is one, maybe it won't be found in time. But an atomic bomb is at least tangible, Colonel. It can be seen, handled, and its manufacture halted. What you're getting at, Padre, is that... With this mass mental attack, there will be no control and no defense. Exactly. It is invisible, undetectable. It is more dangerous by far than nuclear fission. In the wrong hands or minds... How much time... Starring Mr. Gregory Peck. How much time, asked the Colonel. For a million years, man has been trying to stretch his allotted days. Trying to gain an added minute seeking to halt the shadow on the sundial or slow the grains of sand in the hourglass. And the hands of the clock, like the pointing finger of a recruiting poster, 
inescapably come around to point at me and you and Colonel Mendoza. Answer me, priest. I said, how much time? Four minutes. Would you rather I talked? Yes, go ahead and talk. Say something. Amuse me. I don't find this amusing anymore. When I was thinking of it in terms of a defense against Mendoza. Mendoza's of the world, I had idea. But in terms of aggression, full weapon of offense, it's disturbing. I think you are alarming yourself needlessly, Padre. I believe this whole thing has been built up to misdirect my attention. You think it's to divert your attention from an attack in some other quarter? Exactly. Everything in it gone over for wires, explosives, poisons. The building is amply guarded against bombs, dynamite, undermining snipers. There are anti-aircraft guns on the roof. Have I overlooked something? Traitors in the household. That has been considered. How much time? Three minutes. Mine. Ah. Padre, I think I may have overlooked something. What is that? You. Stand up quickly. I want to search you. Well, it was a thought. From your standpoint, a good one. Sit down. How much? Two minutes, approximately. Padre, I have always been a soldier. I spent more time in the saddle than I have at receptions. My, my manners may be a little rough. An understatement, Colonel. Nevertheless, I... I wish to thank you for spending this afternoon with me. And, and for the next... Uh, minute and a half. For the next minute and a half? I shall look back on this day with mixed feelings. From wherever you are. From wherever I am, priest. Why are you watching me so closely, Colonel? You are the only living thing within striking distance. And we have only... One minute. Only one minute to go. I'd be a fool to take my eyes off you. In fact, and I hope you excuse this one final precaution, I think I'll have a pistol under my hand. Strange in what different things different men find comfort. Forty-five seconds. Count it out. Forty. Thirty-five. Thirty. Twenty-five. Twenty. Fifteen. Your pistol, you're knocking it off. Hey! Hey! hey. The colonel, the colonel is shot. Get a doctor. The priest did it. No! Grab the priest! No! No! Stop! Hey, accident. Pistol fell off desk. Let me help you. Move back, please. Give him room. You let me loosen your collar, Colonel. No. Easy, easy now. Never, never mind, Padre. No. No use. I... Anyway, they didn't do this. They didn't... Didn't they, Colonel? Mr. 
Mr. Gregory Peck will return in just a moment. Today's play was written for Mr. Peck by Don Quinn. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone with music composed and conducted by Carmen Dragon and is brought to you by the Prudential Insurance Company of America, the company with the strength of Gibraltar. Now here again is Gregory Peck. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's a moral to this story, I suppose it's simply that there's always one bite left in the underdog. Maybe the idea of a mental execution by the concentrated thinking of thousands of people isn't practical. Maybe it's just as well if it isn't. Drawing the line between an execution and a murder might be a delicate operation. But the idea of thousands and millions working together in a common cause to correct a common evil is neither new nor impractical, whether by prayer, by petition, or by ballot. We can get a better world by joining minds. Call it brotherhood. Call it cooperation. Call it whatever you like. I'm just enough of a Father Michael to believe that thousands of minds joined to attain a common good have a pretty good chance to succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank Paul Fries for his excellent portrayal of Mendoza. Now, next week, the Prudential Family Hour of Stars brings you Van Johnson and the following week, Ray Milan. Be sure to listen, will you? Goodbye. This is Frank Goss speaking and saying good afternoon for the Prudential Family Hour of Stars. Betty Davis, Ray Milland, Gregory Peck, Ginger Rogers, Barbara Stanwyck, and Robert Taylor and for the Prudential Insurance Company of America. Don't forget, next week our star will be Van Johnson and the following week, Ray Milan. Mr. Peck can currently be seen starred in the 20th Century Fox production, Yellow Sky. All characters and incidents used on tonight's program are fictitious, and any similarity to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX Columbia Square, Los Angeles.